Next up, I'm just going to drill a square bottomed hole right here, 3 8 inch end mill. Next up, we're going to machine the slot for the O-ring groove going all the way around the outside to keep the vacuum inside for the plate that will be mounted on top of this. Uh, but first, we're going to center drill and drill the entry and exit points for all of the four corner curves uh, because we won't be doing that at this time. I can't do that very easily here. If I had a CNC, this would be totally trivial. So we're going to drill those points so that I have a starting point for the uh, end mill to start in. The end mill is a special one from Pearson Work Holding that is designed specific for eighth inch O-ring material, and I look forward to using that one. And in case you're wondering, yes, I lost the audio for all of these sections. Uh, battery went dead in my mic, and I didn't even notice it. On to drilling. I go slowly at first because I want the hole to be pretty accurately placed. So the drill bit can walk a little bit initially, and if you go slowly, I find that it tends to stay centered just a little bit better. Second to last hole drilled, and we will follow this up with the last hole, and then we will machine the slots between the holes on either side, if this gives you more perspective, hopefully. The beauty is all these holes are symmetrical about the center line in each direction, so they're very easy to find. You see how the drill bit walked a little bit there? It flexed. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to avoid. As I said, the uh, end mills I'll be using are from Pearson Work Holding. They make vacuum chucks themselves. I didn't look at their design to try and figure out my own. I just was looking up uh, vacuum chucks online and noticed they sold the end mills for the gaskets. And they're basically uh, 0.110 diameter end mill so that the eighth inch uh, gasket will fit inside uh, with a chamfer on top to allow the material to spread a little as it's being compressed. Pretty nice. I bought two of them. They're very friendly. They're local to me here in Simi Valley. So that was kind of exciting. And I just picked it up wheel call. Maybe you'll be able to see this. Here's a close up of the custom end mill. Without any further ado, we're just going to plunge in and we're going to traverse and make the slot. Now one thing here is that since I had so much trouble with the other grooves with the end mills, um, I decided to only do 50 thousandths depth of cut on this first pass. And what that ends up doing is uh, leaving a really terrible burr. Fortunately, when I do the second 50 thousandths, actually the total is 110 uh, depth. Uh, when I do the second pass, it, the chamfer will clean up all that burr and uh, also provide a zone of relief for the uh, o-ring to expand into which makes the contact patch a little bit bigger which is good my way back for the final pass the chamfer is there it didn't show up very well on camera. I guess you can see it a tiny bit with reflection, but it doesn't really show up. But the burr is being removed nicely. And I think I did this in three passes. I My first go, I was a little conservative. I think on the follow-up uh, slots, uh, or grooves rather, I uh, just did it in two passes. But the first time, I think I did like 50, 50, and then 10 thousandths, which I think this is, I'm doing the 10 thousandths pass now. And uh, it worked out pretty well going to do a quick uh, test fit of the o-ring material here and uh, it fits pretty well I think I had to go a little bit deeper as I recall um, the o-ring material I purchased 100 feet at a time I think I got it off of eBay or Amazon I can't remember um, but it was like 20 something dollars for 100 feet so that'll last me a really long time and you can make your own custom size o-rings you uh, glue them together with some of that black loctite that Robin Rossetti talks about um, works really well that's rubber reinforced loctite after one more pass uh, retried the o-ring material and this time it seems like it's sitting really nicely just a tiny bit proud from the surface of the plate uh, so it'll get compressed and spread out and hopefully make really good contact 
Jumping ahead with some movie magic. Here's all four slots done. I guess if you catch the light right, you can see in like the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the chamfer a little bit better. It, it doesn't show up a whole lot, but uh, it does a really, the end mill does a really nice job. Jumping ahead, here's the uh, plate as finished so far. And I took it over the surface grinder and uh, did like a couple ten thousandths pass just to take off all the burrs everywhere. A still, still a little bit of hand deburring needed, but for the most part it turned out pretty good. This guy over and drill and ream for quarter inch pins, the center of rotation for each one of those corners, and that will let me uh, easy fi easily find them for my rotary table when I want to machine the slots in the corners. But I have to build a fixture for that. Here's the uh, four holes drilled and reamed in the back to locate the center of the radiuses for the slots on the front. So those holes are about here and they'll let me do the radius on the rotary table, hopefully. <laughs> I'm just trying something I've never done before, so we're trying to figure it out. In preparation for doing all my tapping, I got a mat down there to keep the cutting fluids and tapping fluids off of my welding plate because that seemed like a bad combination and put these two holes in here and that might be a little confusing but hopefully it'll become clear in just a moment the one thing that's true about tapping is that there's a fair amount of force involved and you really need to secure your work i thought i could just let it sit there but uh, definitely not that was a big mistake didn't break a tap but easily could have so you need a vice does that give any further hints Last hint, something that may not have been obvious, is the new Kurt DX vices, uh, DX6 vices, and maybe the DX4s have pins for alignment in your ways on your, on your mill. Well, I'm going to also use those just to stop it from rotating, and I think the weight will hold it down with plenty of force. Next up, we're going to use the tapping arm back here to tap all these items. For those of you who watched my review and didn't see me get to tap steel, I knew I was doing this and at the time didn't have any scrap steel. So I will be tapping all these holes and I'm gonna go from easiest to hardest. So start with the three eighths to the quarter to the 10, number 10 uh, holes. All these are 70% threads. So they should definitely present a challenge to the machine as far as you know protecting breaking taps and whatnot. Uh, in my demo, I didn't have super great luck. Uh, it might be that the settings from the factory on these collets really don't match what they say on the side. So like this one, 7.26 Newtons is what it says. Uh, might very well not be. Uh, this one's 9.14. The really small one here is 3.86. So yeah, they may not uh, really protect uh, as much as they should without some adjustment. We'll check that out too. Uh, I've got my vise over here, and uh, it has a little bit of slop, but it will just push against one end and stop, so it should work out just fine, and it's really quick and easy to remove, which is what I needed, because this is also my welding table. So we're going to try steel here, and we're going to go forward three, forward five, back three. Oh, except it did not. <laughs> It is not on vibration tap. I must have accidentally turned it off, but it went through it like butter. So for those wondering about steel, it went very easily. It was like butter. These are 70% threads. And there's a spiral point tap. So it uh, pushes the chips in front of it. Huh. Oh, cause it's set on manual, not on auto. There we are, we're in auto. So. It looks like I don't need to do the, uh, the vibration tapping anyways. I think we'll just go manual. Because it really goes through like butter. I have it on 150. It seems like I could go faster. So this is 3816 threads and they're looking kind of beautiful. Since we don't seem to need the torque, we're going faster. And much faster out. Again, like butter. Nope. No challenge whatsoever. Didn't bog down. Some beautiful threads right there. I don't know if you can see that. Next up, we have quarter 20, and I have a spiral point 
tap in here because these are all through holes. I'm going to do this one on auto, so it's going to be forward, back, forward, back. That was really easy. So I'm going to try this on manual again. No problem. And I can sp I can increase the speed coming out and make this take a little less time. Piece of cake. Here's the ones that have me most nervous, 1024 into steel. I am going to do this uh, with auto going forward and back, even though these are all through holes. So the chips can go through, but I am nervous about this. This feels uh, like I'm in the neighborhood of breaking a tap, but uh, we're going to try it. Here we go. That was full length of tap, no problem. Had me nervous though. Wow. Okay. That worked out well. Lifted a burr up on this side, but I guess that's sort of to be expected. Ooh. Okay. Well, well, this was a rough experiment. I've got two broken taps here I got to remove and I'm resorting to manually tapping because there is a ton of force on this. That's yeah, uh, this is tough. I think I should have gone for less than uh, less than 70 percent threads like maybe 60. Maybe it would go better because it's uh, it's struggling even manually. I can see why it broke. Even hand tapping I broke another one. Absolutely insane. I was going slow and easy. Still broke a tap. I don't know. Maybe uh, I got the whole size wrong somehow.